Welcome, Badass Manifester. I am so glad you are here. I'm your host and head coach, Ashley Gordon, master mindset and manifestation biz expert, founder of the Quantum Coaching Certification, and multiple six-figure entrepreneur obsessed with empowering you to create quantum leaps in your energy, your life, and your business. This is the show to help you make magic your everyday normal, where the ripple effect is real and the guest experts are world class. My mission is to power your conscious and subconscious mind with manifestation teachings, business tools, and coaching techniques to put your potential into action. Consider this your weekly up level. Are you ready for quantum transformation? Let's do this. Hey, I'm so excited that you're here. I'm so excited to be here. And what time is it in Australia right now? It is 7.30 a.m. Oh, good morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good morning to you. So for everyone that's just tuning in and you're like, who is this, Katie? I wanted to just, I, I love kind of catching up with some of our students. Of course, I can't catch up with everyone, but a behind the scenes look at what what a little catch up ser- situation conversation is like behind the scenes of one of our students who has graduated in the last year, right? In the last year? Yeah. From QCA and just like where what your life what your life was before, where it is now and then where you're seeing it going for 2024. And just share I want I want Katie to share about just like I don't know, just behind the scenes of what's going on in your life. So will you just kick us off with sharing a little bit about where you were before QCA? Because I know that you had a full-blown, you still have a full-blown career, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, Before QCA, I and still do, I am in the Army as a physical training instructor. So that is my career. It's been for 12 years in February, actually. Um, So crazy. Yeah, I know. Time flies. Um, So before QCA, I was in in my job and I was just really lost on like, I love taking PT and the military has been my life for such a long time, but I've always known that I've wanted to do something else Mm. and help in a different way because I'm a little bit quirky when it comes to the military. Like they're very structured and I come out and I like smile and do all the things and they're like, what's happening here? (laughs) And you're like very (laughs) spiritual and they're just like, wait, what? They're so like straight laced, right? Yeah. And sometimes like the end of my sessions, I'll do breath work and things and people are really confused and they're like, (laughs) they know what it is, but they're just kind of, some people are really into it. They're like, this is great. And other people are like, like opening their eyes to see if I'm like done yet. (laughs) What's going on? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Cause some people just, you know, struggle to slow down and the military teaches you to be always on and on and be able to keep going and going and going. So it's like, how do we switch off? Like that's just not a very, it's a very foreign concept to a lot of people when it comes to the military. So yeah, I kind of knew that I always wanted to do something different. No idea what that was. I had so many ideas and plans and dreams and like, you know, had a full book of all the things I wanted to do and I'd write them down and then, but they were massive. Like there was so big. Like, like give me an idea of like, what's something that's like in your, like a pipe dream. Okay, so this massive pipe dream was like, I'm going to open this huge holistic health center where I'm going to have Ooh. all these professionals working and helping so that like, you know, a sports person has like, um, pe- like all the people around them to help them be the best they can be. I wanted that, but for like everyday people. And then I even looked into like working with the NDIS and maybe kids and like, how do I do it in like that capacity? Oh. And I thought like, this huge, I wanted a pool, a gym. I wanted like OTs. I- That's amazing. <laughs> huge yeah Yeah. but then it's like um how do you get there from where I I was um and am so it's kind of like where where's that middle ground because I've always like dreamt huge and then been like okay cool so like I need lots of investors and a lot to do right right yeah you think about what goes into it and you're like maybe not (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So I was kind of just, yeah, trying to work out what I wanted to do next and how I wanted to also 
eventually leave the military and just have it part time. It's still always going to be a big part of my life, and and I'm still always going to love being there to be. Question: that little Did you did you like fall into the military, or did you did you decide did you choose it? Uh, my mum's best friend was in the military and she'd like try and be like, oh, you should join, you should do this. And her two daughters didn't join. And I was like the sporty one. So she was kind of like, oh, you could, you'll definitely love it. Just do it for a year. It'll be fine. So I did it for a year. Here I am nearly 12, 12 years, later. years later. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of perks to being military. Huge. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. Like you get to live in different places. You get to go and, and travel, even though you're working to lots of to other countries. Like yeah, there's like perks when it comes to like where you like, cause they make you live somewhere. They give you money, obviously right. to, like subsidize your rent. And then, you know, you, there's and so I, many opportunities that you get. I don't know. Like if it's like this in this, in Australia, but in the States, you know, I was buying a couch recently and they're like, are you military? I would get like an extra 10% off. And I'm like, no, I'm not, but I wish I was in this moment. <laughs> yeah. Do you get perks like that? Yeah, we do at certain places. Yeah. yeah. I think America does that better actually. Um, okay. What we found out. Cause like, even I remember some of my friends, like, you know, boarding a plane or something, they would like show their military ID and get on. Whereas like in Australia, that's not a thing. They're like, oh, okay. So- <laughs> yeah yeah, but, yeah wow that's did. amazing that you are you know in the military and like stand with your country yeah it is it is an absolute honor really yeah. to be able to yeah and especially to train soldiers and um, around me to then for them to go do big things right like right good enough to be able to go and serve the country in different yeah. ways there's definitely a lot of elements of coaching in what you do. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So so how did you discover QCA and coaching? So for a long time, I was kind of like, I want, I, I like tried to do psychology at uni, failed. <laughs> tried to do like sociology, failed. The uni was like, I think you should stop. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no not really but like I did get an email like your thing's getting um turned off because you're not passing anything and I'm like yeah fair um so you know went through the that kind of process of that not really being I wasn't really interested so like I was in the content but then like writing essays and things I was like all the homework yeah yeah and so then I just tried lots of things. I went to like all these different workshops and then I was like, you know, breath work and all the things being like, something's got to stick, right? Like something, there's got to be something in in what I'm doing. Yeah. So then I went to an energetic healer um, and we did some energetics of just cutting off cords of all the things that like I've been holding on to in my life. And, and we did a lot around wanting to change my career. And I literally said to her, I was like, I want a mentor and a business coach and I want a certification course. I was like, I don't know what any of that looks like. But then the next day on Instagram, QCA, and I joined. Yeah. I was like, yes. And I was oh, like, okay. <laughs> That's amazing. I love stories like this because the way, like the divine guidance, the way people find us is so, I look for that when I talk with people to see like how guided they were in finding us and listening to their intuition yeah well it was perfect divine timing you know perfectly guarded I didn't have to do anything I literally just pulled out my phone and I was like oh perfect this is exactly what I want <laughs> I was like, wow too easy yeah and the fact that you were tuned in enough to your own guidance and intuition to be like oh this is it like you know this is the next logical step for me because I think a lot of people get caught up in overthinking that next logical step even though it's right in front of them Yes. I think what helped was I tried so many things and I just like kind of was in the state where I was like, I just want to do something. And if it feels even slightly right, like I'm going to go for it because I've tried all these other things that just kind of like were fun and were helpful, but I was like, they're not the right thing. So I think, yeah, it was probably just a perfect time for me to just to be like, well, I asked for it. So I got it and it's exactly what I wanted. So I may as well like why would I not go after it? Like it just kind of wow. makes sense. Yeah. So, so when you like, you're the perfect example of someone who ha- is looking for that next thing in their life, right? Like that doesn't exactly know the path, but knows that 
this feels good. This feels like something that you want to do, even though you probably went in this feeling like, I don't even know what to expect. Like you didn't know what to expect. So I'm curious and you could be totally honest, like for real. I know you're on the podcast and everything, but like, was it what you expected when you enrolled and went through the program? I, like you said, I had no idea what I had enrolled for, let's be real. And that happens yeah. a lot for me. Um, I just sign up to stuff if I'm like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. And then I get there and I'm like, oh, my God, what am I doing? Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, like I honestly didn't really know, like I said, what I'd really signed up for. So I, I guess I just kind of took it each day and was like, if it's meant to be, I'll do it. Like, And I remember... Um, you know, like talking on the call and like looking at, you know, the investment and all the things. And I was like, look, like it's the right time. It's what I need to do because it feels right. I asked for it. It must be what I'm meant to do. So I just kind of jumped in. And then honestly, because I had no idea what I was to expect, it couldn't really not meet or meet any expectations because I was like, I don't really know what to do. <laughs> you just jumped in totally blind. <laughs> Totally blind. I mean, I had a look at it, but like, of course, of course. Yeah. But like, even then, I still didn't really know what I was doing. And I didn't really know about coaching. I'd kind of heard about it. But because I'd been in such a structured world where like everybody did like psychology or like, you know, all the things you go to uni for and like, like military people as well, they don't like, we don't stray outside the line. So it was because I'd been starting to stray out and I'd noticed that like that was really good for me. I was like, yeah different and I think it's just the right thing to do I don't know what it's gonna look like I actually had no idea like even like I remember looking at the um immersion days and I was like oh okay early morning all right well I know okay so let's so so this is also great because we have quite a few people that join in from Australia and from your side of the world and of course some of the call so like the the actual weekly calls are five to seven Eastern. I think it's Friday mornings seven to ten seven to nine your time or something. Yeah. Yeah. So that's early and it still works, but then the immersions are in the middle of the night for you. And you did it. You stayed up. You were so committed. What oh. gave you that drive to show up for it? Well, once I'd started, I'm one of those people that once I start something, I have to, I have to do it. Like there's no, and I also love the best thing about QC, which is something that I've always been, is like a doing learn. I love to be able to do it and to be able to do all the tasks and understand all the techniques, right? To be there was way more beneficial than to not be there. So if I could be there way more often, then I would Obviously, like also seven to nine in the morning was my work time. So sometimes I ended up not being able to make a lot of the end calls, even though they were a bit later. I think when I first started, they were like eight to nine. So I got to be able to like wait till 10 so I could like jump on because it was like I took PT at like seven, 7.30. So it was kind of like I had an hour and then I'd like run in and jump on my thing. Lucky my boss was super supportive. Awesome. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, it was really good. But yeah, and then I just because I knew the value of actually being there to do the technique and to practice live. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I was like, I have to be if I can be there and I can do it. And also, like I said, having support from my boss was huge, right? Like yeah. for him, he'd left defense, he had a business, he'd come back. So he knew exactly what I was going after and he was super supportive of that. That's not always very big in my job where people yeah. understand what that looks like but he just was like I support you and whatever you need as long as you do your job I don't I'm I'm happy so yeah. that, that helped a lot too with the 2am starts when I'd go to work afterwards and be like hey boss <laughs> yeah no I think that there's so much there just around like speaking to people that there's some people that will sign up and they will make it happen and they will make it work and there's some people that sign up and they are afraid of that commitment and afraid of showing up and, you know, not knowing if they can do it. But the, like you, you told your, like, because you decided to commit to it, that's why I think your boss was super cool about it. Cause you manifested that, you know what I mean? It's like you, where there's a will, there's a way I believe. hundred percent. Yeah. It yeah. perfectly aligned. And it was because, yeah, I agree that I manifested and wanted it so badly. And I expressed it to him very early and was like, and he was like, cool. Like, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. But yeah, yeah. That's so great. 
So, so looking back on your experience in QCA, what would you say has been your biggest transformation in this whole process? Oh, biggest transformation. I think in the confidence piece, like in general, I feel like I can come into coaching now and, you know, have programs and have people. And when they come in, I feel super calm and just really excited to be able to coach them and be there for them and support them. Like Mm -hmm. without doing that course, I don't know how I would have been able to like, I would probably would have been stressed. I'm a bit of an overthinker. Like I get really yeah. like in my head. So like to be able to just like know that I've got this and just have the confidence to come into a call and know that I have all the skills and all the tools to just be able to be there for that person for whatever they need is huge. Like yeah. I think that was the biggest thing. Yeah. I love that so much. It's so powerful. Mm-hmm. That, that confidence, that confidence within yourself is is very magnetic, you know, and you already are a super magnetic person. Like you're so bright, your energy is so beautiful. You're so vibrant. Like people are just naturally attracted to you. I know that you have best friends that you made in QCA, like all over the world. Can you speak to that a little bit? What is it? What was it like to do your certification virtually? Yeah. I mean, I, it's funny because some things I wouldn't do actually, right? Oh, sorry. Right. It's okay. Dogs are welcome. <laughs> Uh, excuse me. <laughs> um, oh, she's just talking as well. She's giving her her experience. Um, yes, yeah, she's telling her point of view. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think like some things that would be like I I'm always like oh virtually would I do that? But honestly, I think that it was beautiful to be able to meet women all over the world right for that for one is such a beautiful thing to bring um, like-minded people together and the great part about that too is that like I don't know a lot of coaches in Sydney like I didn't have a lot of people around me in in Australia that I knew right so to be able to just tap in and come in and see beautiful people doing the same thing and have the energy and that helped a lot with my transition too because being so like again militant and like okay I don't know that's a bit outside the box you know sometimes I would still have that fear but having other women come in and just be like too super like into it and like it's all fun and it's all the way that life is was like oh okay like I can like that's cool like I have that community and that support system that allows me to to just feel like this is okay and I can keep moving forward with my like from strength strength to strength because I get to have them on my social and that's what I see more of and it's coming into my world more you know like so yeah. I'm not just in the other world where everything's like straight yes and yes 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 who was your partner your peer coach and your peer client um so I had well I had obviously Taylor from Australia so that yes. was yeah she's great and I had Laura Kiss her. Kiss her. Yes, 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 yes. Shout yeah. out Taylor and Laura. <laughs> yeah. I love her. Beautiful. Yeah. Do you still do you, have you met Taylor in person? You have, right? No. <laughs> oh, you haven't? I thought you did for some reason. No, we've talked about it many times and we've tried to make it, but we still haven't worked. Okay. It out. Where does she <laughs> live in, in Australia? Um, she lives like Melbourne. Um, okay. Yeah, not far from not too far, but like Oh, you're in Sydney. Yeah. It's like an yeah. hour and a half plane ride. Yeah. I did that. I did Australia in eight days. Don't recommend it. Did you? Oh yeah. my God. Eight Obviously days. not the whole country, but Sydney, Melbourne, and the Great Barrier Reef. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Wow, that would have been a quick trip. Yeah. Have you ever done the bridge climb? <laughs> yeah. It's so fun. Yeah. So fun. I loved it. Yeah. Gorgeous. I love Sydney. Sydney was my favorite. Bondi Beach. Love it. All the iconic. Yeah. Yeah, All the, all the tourist things. I love it. But they're beautiful. Like they're not, you know what I mean? Like they're gorgeous. I was like, I have to do the bridge before I moved um, for work. And then I came back to Sydney anyway. So I was like, oh, well, but um, yeah, they're beautiful, beautiful things to do. So when I come there again, I'm definitely going to be calling you. Hopefully you'll still there yeah. you, you yeah. don't want to you don't have plans to leave australia right no no, no. that's your home yeah, yeah. okay i'm yeah. sidetracking right now okay 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 so, <laughs> okay so okay so as a brand new coach someone who really didn't know much about coaching go through qca you get super super confident 
you get all of your certifications. And when, when did you find who your soulmate clients were going to be? I think it took me to, hmm, probably, when did we finish QCA? August. I think it took me a bit of the time. I started doing like when we did the Reiki and the EFT, I kind of started with that before I sort of got into coaching per se. Yeah. Um, so I think I really liked that step in, like that. Yeah. Ability. But, um, but they weren't my dream. Like they were beautiful, beautiful clients, but they weren't like for coaching, I guess. Like that didn't quite translate. Um, so probably after, I would say after QCA. Okay. I mean, I did coach Laura, which was a dream. She was an absolute dream. I mean, she's doing amazing. So like, yeah. I mean, in the program, I had incredible clients. Yeah. Um, and you saw their transformations happen before your eyes. It was insane. Yeah. It was yeah. so incredible. So, I mean, that was beautiful. So I guess my soulmate clients were already in there doing that, but yeah. then moving out, I think it took me, yeah, probably a bit after, a little bit after QTA when I started putting out more coaching stuff and got a bit more, you know, like I was ready to coach. I was like, I've yeah. got all my certifications. I'm ready to go. I'm going to do this. And then, yeah, it didn't take me that long. I've had um, so many soulmate clients. It's insane. And I just. Whoa. Oh, so, good. so I feel like that's the part that people are like, of course, I want to know, I want the update on your business, obviously. Like I want to know what's going on in your business. Like you're, cause it's so inspirational to hear this, right? Like you're someone who came in with a zero coaching experience, no business. And now you have a full blown business. You're serving beautiful clients. You're getting paid for your work as a coach, correct? Yes. Yeah. So how did you, how do people find you? Cause I follow you on social media and I see you just shining your light out there. You're putting yourself out there. You share a lot on there or you like, you've started to share more. So like, how are you getting clients? mainly through social media just no like, way that's amazing yeah. I mean it's not I yeah. it's not super surprising but how many followers do you have like 800 maybe that is I I ask that because I think it's such a beautiful example to show people what is possible yeah well I think it's funny right you don't need in my like opinion, obviously it's lovely to grow your social media and I love more followers and that's really fun. But I also remember um, sitting there and being like, I know people that have clients that don't have lots of big followings and don't have like lots of people on socials. And I was like, and they still have clients. So I feel like as long as the, the right people will come in and I, most of my clients have been people I actually didn't know. Um, but have come from watching me, from knowing someone else who followed me, and then they've just been like sitting, creeping in the back. <laughs> nice. and, they disappear, and I'm like, Hi. okay, <laughs> hello. And how often are you sharing your offerings? Um, I probably don't share them as much. Like that's something that I'm coming into now is like being able to, I, I try and talk into my life more and what's kind of going on but I definitely want to start sharing them more I probably only share them like I don't know maybe once a week if that that's like, good yeah that's good because people need to know how they can work with you like if they're watching you and they're they're waiting for that opportunity you know yeah. but yeah. that's incredible that it's people who who knows like you never know who's watching you never know Sometimes it's people that have like worked with me previously in defense and then all of a sudden they just tell their like, they're like, oh, you should look at this person. I worked with her. She was great. And then they follow me for a bit. And then all of a sudden, like one time I put up this like, oh, I've got a 15 minute like free, you know, call. And then someone just came in and was like, I'm ready. And then they got on the call and I was like, okay, like it's just a free coaching call. There's no like payment here or like sale. And then they were like, we were doing the coaching and then they're like, so how do we do this? And I was like, oh. I was like, uh, we can, okay, let's do it. Oh my God. <laughs> you caught me completely wow. on guard. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That's that's how you know you're a quantum coach because people yeah. are like, how can I pay you? <laughs> yeah, literally, she just like, I don't know. I was just like, is this happening? Like, is this really happening? Wow. So, like, the computer is just um, about to die. It's okay. We can cut it all out or it's just behind the scenes. People can hear this. This is real life. Yeah, this is what happens. This yeah. is behind the scenes. Um, so so 
when you are, so are you, what kind of coaching, what's your niche specifically, empowerment coaching? Yeah, so pretty much just bringing women back into themselves. So I started because I was a physical training instructor, like with a six-week course of coming back to yourself when it comes to holding like your physical body to hold yourself for everything that you want to do in life. Oh, and then, great. yeah, because I just feel like, you know, it, for me it starts in my physical body. If I'm feeling good physically and I'm out moving and then I'm, I start to eat better and I think better, obviously the role effects. So that was the beautiful thing of just reconnecting. So I started with that because that was from where I'd come from and also, you know, watching women in defence and out of defence just, like, coming back to themselves. And it was my journey, right, like, to come back into myself and learn that, you know, all the things that I had done when I was felt really good physically obviously had a flow-on effect and everything touches everything. And so yeah. it just was a beautiful thing to bring into a six-week program where people can just come in and, and find out what's right for them. I think it's funny sitting in, not that I'm in the – the, really the industry of fitness but I'm kind of like I'm kind of slightly removed being in defense right. because obviously I have classes and I do things but I don't I'm not fighting for clients it's not like sort of that sort of thing but I think watching a lot of that industry I was kind of like oh like some people don't want to do that and I worked with a lot of women and and in different programs at work that like were coming from nothing and had to learn how to you know why you would breathe heavy when you run like what does that mean am I having an anxiety attack is something going on I said no no that's very normal like it's you know something that you have to get used to but it's okay you're okay like so I kind of worked from with women from the start with that sort of stuff and that made me realize like how much and how far along I am and how right how that affects you obviously understanding all those things and how your body works and how when you connect and understand your body you can move forward in all aspects so I think that was my big thing that I want well that's what I would love for every woman and then I realized stepping into the next phase of you know your own growth and your own moving forward is like that empowerment piece of just like coming into your own of who you are and what you want. And then, so that's what I opened for next year in March. I'm doing like a six month mastermind for like, mm. you know, yeah, mind, body and soul to come in to really just um, lead your own life, like whatever that looks like to you. So. Wow. Yeah. I was just going to ask you next, like, what does this next year look like for you? Because I feel like you're on the brink of just really exploding and I'm curious right now, like, are you, do you feel like you're at capacity with your one-on-one -on -one clients or do you feel like you could take on more or you're just going to focus on the mastermind? I, I don't think I'm at capacity. I mean, it's lovely um, for now for the end of the year, but I definitely believe I can hold more um, for next year. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think there's definitely potential for a lot of growth. There are other things that I'm looking at. I'd like to run events and there's like a whole yes. back of that as well. So, um, but that was huge coming from my Nepal trip. And like, I remember I was like just walking through, you know, the beautiful um, forest and mountains. And I was talking to a girl about how I went on this to this event. And I was like, it was amazing. I had all these women come and speak. And it was so beautiful. And she was like, why don't you do that? And I was yeah. like, yeah, true. I, I don't know. <laughs> so wow. in my mind. And then she was like, um, she also does that sort of thing in, in South Australia, um, in you know, for women. So she was kind of like, I'm happy to help you and guide you through that. Oh, so, see, the yeah. universe just aligns that this I love this story because it's really illustrating. Like when you take action, when you move. When you go in a certain direction, you get these divine downloads, these this divine inspiration. And like, of course, you would get that inspiration when you're on a trip in Nepal, walking through the forest, and you're just clear as a whistle, you know, and divine inspiration comes through. It's like, you should do this. And then someone outside of you, as almost like a hologram to yourself, is like giving you that confirmation that you can do this, like, and you're supported in doing this. Yeah. Yeah, it was beautiful. So cool. because, yeah, because I'd said only like maybe a month or two before I was at Tony Robbins and, you know, yeah. I was starting in Australia that he came and I was like, oh, 
and it was like the start of my four months off and I remember looking at someone on stage and being like I want to be up there and so it was so funny because only I'm like maybe one of the women I met on there she then asked me to MC at her event so I MC'd at her event and I was like this is just like the universe just clearly telling me this is the way I'm going and then yeah and then to have her on my Nepal trip to her be like why don't you run events and I was just like I don't think I could like yeah you're right like this is just once you open the door then you start yeah and the way that your like faces right now you are lit the fuck up right now you are smiling from ear to ear you're just like ah this is it so 2024 <laughs> you're gonna run events you're going to have your mastermind what yeah. are you I want you to declare it here now because um, we might do like another episode in the future afterwards. It's like, oh, yeah. shit, follow up. <laughs> I love that. So what are you declaring for 2024? I am declaring. No pressure. <laughs> no, I'm like, oh gosh. Um, I'm declaring just an, a year of abundance in all of my, all areas of life. That's what I'm declaring and just moving forward into my own empowerment of then empowering other women, just like having that beautiful flowing effect. Yeah. So beautiful. Yeah. At the, I was interviewed on Catherine's podcast, Manifestation. Yeah. And at the end, she's like, so what are you manifesting right now? And I was like, oh, on the spot. <laughs> and I said, I'm manifesting 100 students into QCA. That's amazing. And, she, and now we're at like 90. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. I know. Thank you. It's crazy. So like, there's a lot of power in declaration. Yeah, for sure. Oh, well, I keep going now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, what What else? Like, be specific. How many people are, when are you launching your mastermind and how many people are you calling in? Because there might be people on this uh, podcast listening that want to join. Yeah. So my mastermind I'm launching in March. Um, okay, that's after right. I run my six-week group program. Um, and then, yeah, so I want to call in 15 people to my mastermind. Yes. Um, I want it to be, yeah, huge and um, just such How about a beautiful- I am calling in? I am calling in 15 people in to empower her, mastermind is what I've called it. Yes. Um, and I'm going to be speaking and doing events all around Australia by the end of the year. So that's definitely Ooh, happening. baby. Yes. Yeah. And so it is. So it is. Anything yeah. else you want to add to that? <laughs> Oh gosh. Um no, I think that's okay. pretty good for business. It feels anyway. complete. Yeah. Perfect sense. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Amazing, amazing. I, I am so in awe of your journey and just people ask me all the time on application calls, like, well, I don't have a business at all. I don't have any coaching experience whatsoever. And they're scared that they're not going to be able to make it happen. And I'm curious for you, like, what would be your advice for that person that has that a little bit of fear of like, I don't know if I could do this or, you know, how it's all going to unfold? I think we don't know anything what, that's going to happen in life, right? So I think, and that fear is totally normal. Like, it's totally okay. And I just think like, if you're going to do you either pick the decision to do nothing or you yeah. go for it and you just see what happens. Like there is no harm in trying, like in going for something that feels good or you feel like if you're pulled to it or if it comes into your world, like there's obviously a reason and everyone will have different experiences and come out with different things. But like taking that step will show you where you're meant to go anyway. So like, yeah, it's normal. And yeah. if it's called to, to you, do it. That's such good advice. I love how you validated that. Very good. <laughs> Very good coaching there. And also just, you're right. We don't know. We don't know what we don't know, but we have to take that first step. Um, I had another question that I wanted to ask you about that too, which was, I I, I was starting this reel and yeah. I was playing around with it. I still haven't posted it, but I, 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 I posed this question and it was like, what do all of the most successful QCA alumni and graduates have in common? fill in the blank. I, 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 there's so many things that came to mind. I had a whole list, but I'm just curious if you had like a couple that came to your mind, what would it, what would it be? I think just taking action and, oh, it's kind of hard. I guess there's a lot of things like we were super supported. Obviously we come through with that support. So we know that we can go and do it. We like, 
um, some of the women have been able to do retreats together and stuff. So like yeah. the fact that there's that love and support and you know that you're on the right track always, like I think, and you um, feel that when you take those steps, like you just feel so supported. So it's, you know, you go after things and you know that if you just take the small steps, you'll get there. I mm. mean, I guess you get to see that from all the other women that are in the so QCA as well. Like, yeah, I think the Believe- so belief in the women that like did it before you yeah and the the one thing that came to me that I was like I don't know is this like good enough to say like because it feels very true and that would be like my answer for myself too it's like I just I never gave up yeah. but like you just can't you can't quit you have to keep going there's not not everything is gonna work yeah. and that's okay you know yeah, yeah for sure I mean, there's no, I think that, yeah, you're right. There's no option to give up. Like even then times when you might be like, oh gosh, this isn't working or what am, what am I doing? Or you have those moments, yeah. right? you know, and they happen. It's kind of like, no, no, I, I invested. I know that this was the right path. I was shown this way. Like I am not going to stop because I know the impact that it has, right? Because yeah. we see in QCA from you teaching us all these skills, you have such an impact on us. Like mm-hmm. then when we go out into the world, we have an impact on others. So it's like that beautiful. Yeah, I think that's beautiful. Yay! <laughs> What's a reel in your drafts that you're questioning to post right now? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> anything in there anything <laughs> um I haven't yeah actually I do have one um but I haven't quite worked out how I wanted to do it it's like I'm walking I'm at the top of a, a hill in Nepal Poon Hill it's like we trekked up this hill and like in the morning to catch the sunset beautiful and yeah. um it's like a slow walk and I've got like chariots of fire playing and like but I don't know what I want it to like there's so many things I want to say about it, but I'm just not sure how I want to portray it. So yeah, that's one Ooh. that's sitting by. So um, you're walking uphill. Is that can you tell that you're going uphill? No, I'm walking straight. The mountain mountains are behind me, but I'm just okay. like it's looking slow mo, and I'm like looking out to the side. And oh, like, I love! I can't wait to see that. What's your? <laughs> <laughs> do you have your top vision yet for it? Like what you're? What you? No. Okay. No, I like I want to try it to fight because like, it's just like do 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 do. And like, so I think it's going to be like really fun, but I haven't worked out what I want to say on it yet. Like I'm kind of just like, do I want it to be like a super inspirational thing? Do I want it to be like, you know, stepping into that, you know, next, but I don't know. There's so many things that come to my mind that I'm like, I just have to pick one. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe something for the new year. Yeah. Yeah. Like looking towards 2024 or something or like saying Mm -hmm. bye to 2023 or I don't know. I don't know which way you're looking looks like you're going forward or backwards so I could definitely say goodbye and hello boom (laughs) make sure you send it to me I need to see it (laughs) (laughs) this has been such a fun conversation okay my last like question for you would be well I have a couple two more questions one is what how would you like if you could give like one statement or one sentence to your overall experience in QCA, what would it be? First thing that come to mind is just so expansive, supportive, and so much love. I think that they're like the three things that pop into my mind. I don't know that I have a sentence. I love that. Three words. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing Mm -hmm. that. And I want to ask you what makes you a badass manifester? Oh, good question. Um, I think what makes me a badass manifester is that I just think so much like now, I think bigger and I'm like, just put it out there. And then I'm like, so excited to just let it go and be like, can't fucking wait to see what that looks like. Yes. (laughs) I love that. it's it's almost like you've built up so much belief in like the belief tank that you can really let things go and be like I can't wait for this to show up in my physical reality yeah and just like not worry about how it does that I think that was something that I was really stuck in before and now yeah just being like there you go universe show me what you got (laughs) show me what you got little mama show me what you got 
Fiddle <laughs> I love that. It's so good. <laughs> that is so good. You just are pure joy. I'm so happy that we did this. And I want everyone to be able to connect with you, to follow you, to work with you. So how can they get in touch with you? Yeah. So um, on Instagram, Katie Sontag, same. I'm on Facebook and, and that's pretty much it. I've got a website being built, but that's kind of on the, on the, yeah. It's Another great example of someone that is a successful coach and doesn't have a website yet. Like that yeah. is so perfect. I didn't have one for so long. And for years, my husband thought I was just working on my website. Like he was like, oh, well, really? he's just like, are you working on your website? He still comes home and jokes. How was working on your website today? I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, even that, I put that out there and kind of let it go. And then my cousin was like, I'm building websites now. It's like a thing that I'm doing. And I was like, he's like, can I build your website for free? And I was like, um, what? Yes. so I was like, yeah. what is your human design? I'm a generator. Yeah. Sacral generator. I think I'm just a gen. I don't know. It's a just your, you, you, it, your authority tells you whether you're like, yes, you're a generator. Mm -hmm. And then there's like another aspect to it. That's I, I would guess sacral because sacral is like that intuitive knowing, like, you know, something right away, whether it's a yes or a no. Like yeah. you did for QCA, you were like, oh yeah, yes, that's what I'm doing. And then you move forward with it as opposed to like saying yes and then overthinking it. Or like we have the tendency to overthink. I'm a generator too. Um, but yeah, <laughs> sorry, side note. Um, no, that. So exciting. <laughs> I'm going to look it up now. I'm going to go find out. <laughs> yeah, definitely check it out. Definitely check yeah. it out. But yeah. everyone go follow Katie. We linked everything in the show notes for you. So you can just click her Instagram and give her a follow. And her last name is S-O-N-N-T-A-G. So if you heard her say it, just know that there's two ends there. And it's K-A-D-I-E. I should I should have just spelled it all. <laughs> yeah, K-A-D-I. Yeah, I'm sorry, K-A-D-I, no E. No. I just made that. <laughs> I'm literally looking at her name and I'm just like, E. <laughs> <laughs> so many people lately have added an E just for fun, you know. Like just for fun. Yeah. <laughs> like <I> just <laughs> It's like a fun full stop. I'm like, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I hope you have the best day. I hope you have the best holidays. Oh, thank you. You too. Thank, thank you. you. It was so fun to catch up with you and just, I'm so happy for your success and for 2024, like, will you be leaving the military once your business is at a certain level? Yes, I will. Yeah. Okay. So, is that you, okay to you... say like on the podcast? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they'll be listening to it. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, it's fine. And like, I'll still, like I said, always be in a like capacity where I can go in and run a lesson and still be part of it. But yeah, I will be. So I'm excited to see when that happens. I've actually been on four months off from the military. Um, so I go back or I go to work in January. So Wow. Okay. So enjoy the rest of your sabbatical. Thank you. <laughs> and... I'm so excited to see what happens in 2024 for you. So pumped mm -hmm. and all the people that you're here to serve. So if you feel called to work with Katie, get in touch with her. Her mastermind will fill up and I know your one-on-one -on -one spots will be filling up. So definitely get in touch with her as soon as possible. And yeah, I'm so much love. Thank you. Thank you. This was so much fun. So fun. So yeah. fun. <laughs> you crushed it. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Woo. We did some work today. Thank you so much for listening. You know I love my BAM fam. If this episode resonated with you, please share it with someone who you know would love it too because we live for the ripple effect over here. And how can you best support the show? Make sure you're subscribed, hit the five stars, and leave a review on iTunes and let me know how the podcast has impacted you. I love being part of your real-time journey, so screenshot the episode and tag me and my guests on Instagram at Manifest with Ash. Now say it with me, I am my own power source. I am the master of my own energy, and I deserve everything that I desire. We don't just talk about it over here, we be about it. Now go get them. <laughs>